what a ting. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what a thing, right? <laughs> right? As my first guest for London Something, right? My podcast, <laughs> I got the one, the only, Goldie. <laughs> well, you know, last time we were in a room together, it was a Metal Gate affair. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was going to ask that question, right? All right, yeah. so for those who don't know, right, what the Metal Gate affair was, yeah? Mm. Um, you got your version of what it was, yeah? But I, I got my version. <laughs> I got my, my version of what it was. My version right? runs true like an arrow. All right, all right then. So, so, so my version of what Metal Gate affair was, was that at that time, that time being you just released uh, Timeless, Timeless yeah. yeah? And... Um, and everybody was really precious about, um, about you know, it's, this is my jungle. No, 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 this is liquid. No, 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 it's jump up, isn't it? Even me, yeah? yeah? And then, and then I'm we, glad you finally come to your Listen, sense. listen, I've listened back to the open forum tape and then there's, I've listened back to my voice and I've gone like that. Shut up, Ron. <laughs> well, Ron, shut up. <laughs> I want to tip my hat to Rocky because Rocky called up. Yeah, like, you like looking like mugs at you. <laughs> I remember you? that, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You, know, you know, the idea of the idea of where I'm at as well, especially with sometimes vision or the idea of um, pioneering, mm. It's moving target. Mm. You're there to get shot at, and I think that there's a lot, a big disparity between, you know, the ethos of what drum and bass music was, and how we see Jungle as well, because we know third, you know, third, third party records, Kickman records, Warrington the Snowman, I beat the records. We know Concrete Jungle. We know where that came from, and of course mm -hmm. that leapfrogged into the idea of MC and sound system and everything else. But at the end of the day, the one thing I've realised about that tree. It's a very thick oak mm. with a lot of branches. Mm, mm, mm. And we were just really saplings with all of these different things. We didn't know days. where we yeah, were. Yeah. We didn't know the leaves leaves hadn't blossomed. Mm, very early Flowers days. hadn't 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 bloomed. It took them twenty five years. Twenty five years. And um and and that and where we're at is that, you know, I think that drum and bass music, the impact when you say when you say drum and bass music, there's such a it opens up a whole thing. When you just narrow it down to certain connotations. The idea for me is that I think drum and bass music has done for electronic music or what graffiti did for art. Mm -hmm. It's opened it up. At its centre in its purest form, at five in the morning when Brock is rolling out, when Andy's dropping his tune or Randall's rolling mm -hmm. it out, Ryder's mm -hmm. killing it. Mm -hmm. It's still the uncle that goes to the party to get drunk and no one wants to speak to him because he's speaking the truth. Mm, 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 and it mm, mm. really won't get played on daytime radio mm, as we know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and which course. is why people like Rinse and people like, we've had to really create our own cottage industry of how the new kids, the new blood, listen to this music and how Grimes impacted the voice of, of the many when we were the, the resonance of the sound of the feeling that was going on, how this country felt, mm -hmm. how we felt. You can imagine that at that time, you know what I mean, 25 years ago, right? I remember you saying that. I remember you got to a point in the conversation and you going like that, listen, 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 it's drum and bass, end of story. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody went like that. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Uh, it, was, it was like, it was, um, I think it was a seminal moment, to be honest, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of people have said it to, to me, Ron, you know, somebody should release the tapes and whatever. Um, I don't even think it's that. I think it's I think it's like, it was a lesson for all parties in the way that I knew that this is where this music was going to be. Mm -hmm. I knew, I could see it like that, but I wasn't a businessman. I was a visionary in that mm -hmm. sense, and I know that. And I was consumed by it also, remember? You know, and I was... I was on tour, man. I was, I was, I was dis getting destroyed. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking with a bass player. You're playing with. You say, keep playing. There's white people throwing water on the bass player mm -hmm. while you're warming up for Perry Farrell. Mm -hmm. When this music was up against George Michael and Destiny's Child for best album, Mobos. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When it, when it, when it, it took that stage. But like every kind of music from from Black Origin, jazz being the denominator. Um, it was such a powerful thing that having money and cars, we just treated it with so much disrespect because it was like Monopoly money. Mm. It was like, we ain't never used to this. And all you could do when you get there, you just end up going, fuck you all. Mm. And really, that's not the maturity. That was just the anger of being angry that this music was so kept down, so kept back. You wonder why kids on road are Aggie now because mm. no one's listening. Yeah. And the energy of that, do you know what I mean? So... It was important times. I think it was. It was. You know. I, I, you know. My growing never came for till the last ten years. Really. Mm, mm. I, I, when I look back on them twenty years, where did they go? Yeah, that was kind of like 
and saying to my producer, like, I wasn't quite sure exactly where I met Goldie. I said, I remember a, I remember a period. I think it was time. Raw. Do you think it was Raw? I think it was Raw Club or we, oh, maybe before. Or yeah, yeah, I before. yeah, I think it was before because I can't remember the moment, but I just remember a period of time. And that period of time was Dorney House. Dorney Tower, yeah. yeah. Dorney Tower, Dorney Tower. yeah. Um, um, and Jay, Pe Jay Pender's thing where you had yeah, the flat. Yeah, that's right. He had the flat. I remember going out of Carrie at the time and she lived on Grosvenor Ar uh, Avenue, which oh. was like on the other side of uh, mm. of Primrose Hill Road. So what I do remember mm. when you played Hand of the Dead Body. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Raw. Right. And it destroyed okay. the gaff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was like, I hadn't made a tune for a minute. Because I was post timeless. I hadn't made a tune. I'd be like, Can he, has he still got, got it in him to make a tune? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'd, you know, as you know, when artists make stuff, then it was always about getting a remix. So not yeah, adding Ice Cube to come. And it was about, you know, there was a lot of shootings going on. And mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, 365, yeah. we got a, you know, mm -hmm. body on 183. And it was like, you know, the hand of the dead body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was a great moment because mm -hmm. you just broke up the place. And I'm like, yes, winning. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the culture of the music was 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 it was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know the culture. You know we used to go roast and hear Ryder play Ryder's Ghost and roast and man's licking the wall. It was yeah, yeah, man's yeah. getting a Ford from the back of the room. You see, you see the thing is, I mean, without going too far down the the route of um, you know the variations in the music, mm. what a lot of people didn't realise that that um, what what we now call jungle and what we now call drum and bass and what we now call all these variations um they were actually being played in those club in those um club nights anyway 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 you were hearing it all yeah yeah you, you were hearing it all anyway we just, just had our own there. we just had our own places to play that's right that's, and that's all, all it, it was that's all it was and that's all it was and 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 one of those places whether it be blue note whether it be um swerve you know like um, mm. on Tottenham Court road they would gravitate more to one whereas mm. roast might gravitate to exactly. the older man there's right. the sound system yeah, too. exactly yeah yeah, yeah so um i mean i want to kind of like fast forward i know there's a lot of people out there that would like to know uh, who don't know the full history of uh, goldie and and, and stuff like that, you're gonna have to check Wikipedia for that. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Right? Um, you know, like I wanna kind of like jump in with like, um, you know, like I know that recently you've brought out your um, new book. We just mm. were having a chat about that off air just now. And um, and my my interesting thing about for me, like having read part of it so far, which I've had to stop because you give me another book. That is just, <laughs> <laughs> actually, another book that is right the now. Gift, that's, that, gift, that, that one there is the one that I'm reading. Do you know what yeah, I mean? And yeah. I'll go back to that one. I'll have that done by the end of the year. But but interestingly, you already had a autobiography out. Yeah. Right. So why did you go in again? Um, I think that the first book, Nine Lives, was really about how big your dick is and how many birds I nailed mm, mm, and mm. how much money I had. It was a totally charged by ego, ego mm -hmm. and egotistical mm -hmm. shot. Which you do, you know, everyone gets it. I reckon, you know, Stormzy's probably got a couple of couple of hundred grand on the table ready for a book. I'm mm -hmm. sure you know, I speak to Dylan all the time. Dizzy's had many innumerable offers and I played mm -hmm. the book was written and it was canned. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to put it out because he's gonna if we, the truth's gonna hurt a lot of people in his own that's mm -hmm. his own words. But the idea of that book was it was the maddest time. If I, if I was to say, if I was to say the madness of, you know, I'm on the, I'm on route to the White House to go to a Bill Clinton private party with Val Kilner and Josh Evans, and I missed the flight, I got off my tits the night before, and I've got a man speaking to me in the White House going, look, man, the security team, you're going to fly on the red on as a private jet way, and I couldn't make it, and I'm like, fuck it, and I'm, I'm out there in, with Naomi in New York, I'm just going, madness, it was mm -hmm. madness, it was, it was just insane. You know, Chateau Mau Mau in LA, and I'm in, I'm in Belusky's room, which was mm. 1010, the famous room which people want to book and which he OD'd in. I mean, that's mm, mm, mm. kind of morbid, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you're walking in and it's just full of candles, and you're sitting there having a conversation with Ted Turner on mm. the phone. Just madness. It was, it was almost as if my life had gone from being in care all my life to just living in an absolute mad dream world. Mm, mm, mm. Like the maddest of dream worlds. Mm. I couldn't have made it up. You couldn't have written the script. Yeah. So And you're probably fueling that as well. You know, you're well, just was, like was, you're just like that that fly to the to the or moth to the flame. I was moth to the flame. I mean? Totally. And it was it was the idea of burning Mm. And I was going at such a I mean it was hedonistic. I was I'd, I'd like yeah, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. like I would leave 
gear and the carpets and, and, and places in hotel rooms in LA that I'm going back to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. like madness. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but the, going back to the point of the book, it was what it was. And the one thing in the later, that each chapter was a, a name of a song. But the greatest thing about the book was that there was still this quiet voice in the background that was wanting to make music. Mm. The voice of the music talking to me. He just yeah. kept talking to me. He kept talking to me. And he kept saying, he said, the only thing that's going to save you. Mm-hmm. And I became a parody, man. I mean, I became mm-hmm. a complete parody of myself because I knew the, the whole way the deal was dealt with with Trenton was it was going to be two albums firm. Mm-hmm. So even if, in Bowie's words, even if you make a pile of shit. Yeah, yeah. you still got two you still, albums. you still got two albums. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and you've made Timeless and you're done, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, Saturn's Return was a very, very difficult album. It's, I, th- I still will stand by Mother. It's being re-released um, next year with um, the company that bought Polygram. And it's celebrating its 20th years of existence as well as the time. It's the 25th. 25th, yeah. But Mother will still be the greatest record recording I've ever done, which is based on Greek tragedy. It mm. is a kid lamenting for his mother and the loss of her not being present. Mm. And in my own experience for what I've gone through in my spiritual experience three three years ago four years ago when she died she she died I came back from two gigs I raced I got to eat I, she'd been going for this cancer stuff I just got back from two gigs the phone rings I'm on the driveway I'm living in a rented accommodation because I'm building a house in Thailand my mom in the previous summer had been giving me bags of money and doing some and just stuff that she'd had. All this money. She'd come down on the train, my mom, and be crazy, suitcases full of money, like, take this. She, she had a lot of things around her that she didn't want people to do stuff. Mm. And she got sick, and, and she'd already survived a couple of operations. She, and um, it was almost as if, from a spiritual perspective, she was staying alive. Because the decision of moving to Thailand was imminent. And... My brother passed, the, 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 my Fritz passes me the phone and my brother says, she's going. She's got like, she's got hours. And Fritz, and I says, I just broke down and Fritz says, just come on, let's just do it, let's just go. And we drove to Wolverhampton, back to Wolverhampton, being in London. I've just been to like, you know what I mean? Like, I think Liverpool and somewhere yeah, else yeah, and yeah. back down and it's the sun, I'm back up. And we get there, but she, she, she'd come out of the hospital to go home and then she, she, I think she knew she was going to take a turn and she was going to mm. die mm. and she wanted to die at home. And they had the be- hospital bed set up in the front room. And um, she was going. Mm. And we got around the bed. And it was the first time the family had ever all been together. And if anyone had ever read that first book, I hated my family. My whole family was... I'm a lone wolf, man. Always mm, mm, mm. Apart from Stewie. Stewie's, Stewie and Joe. I remember Stewie, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, it was first, and I read... She had this weird Bible that she loved. And she'd always have this 23rd Psalm underlined. She wasn't really religious. But I guess it was just this thing that she had. And I read it for, for her, with the family there. Mm-hmm. And the main part of the situation was... She died. She, she held on all night, man. And then she, she in the morning, she, a, a, a breathing took a turn, and I knew this was it. And her tongue was black, and she'd mm-hmm. gone, and they to get the morphine, it's game over, yeah, yeah. she's done. And even when she died, it was a, the mom was comedy moment because she died and everyone went, oh, I'm broke down. And then she kicked him with the breath again, like, I'm <laughs> yeah. my mom. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 fighting, yeah, yeah. Scotty, little Scottish lady, man, yeah, fighting yeah. to the end, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she died and my brother, my brother who, I, who I don't really get on with, goes, you know, so we're going to stick together and, you know, and I'm like, I'm gone, I'll see you later, I'm out of here. He's like, what, are you running away now? You've always run all your life. You've always ran. I'm like, yeah, and I'm going to keep running because mm-hmm. that ain't mom in there. Mm-hmm. That's my mom. That's a white monkey with skin stretched over it. She's gone and she's mm-hmm. long left that body stuff. Mm-hmm. So I made a decision. America was the week later and she was going to be on a slate for 10 days. And I thought, what's always healed me? Mm. Music has always healed me. And I went to America, cried a lot, did a lot of mad stuff. Even even to the point where in the this book you're talking about, yeah. All things remembered. It's the first time I've ever had no shame. Where I went into I went into Times Square. I just done yoga. I'm in flip flops. I've got I've I've got, I've got landed in New York. I'm going to LA. I've gone to a hotel on the L train. Like it's just 
there. Yeah. And I wake up at four in the morning. I speak to Serena Gordon from the Hoffman Institute. And I said, like, you know, because I did the Hoffman, which got, kind of got me divorced and got me where I need to be. And I said, I'm trying desperately to hold this together. Mm. I'm like, you know, I'll well, yeah, we're talking about it, Chief. This is four years ago. And um, I woke up at four in the morning. I cried a lot. I found, I found two people, Serena and Groove. Mm. I says, Groove, I'm really fine to keep this together. Because my whole world is just been, she's gone. It's like it was a, it was a movement, a shift. Yeah. And um, I woke up at four. I had the phone call, cried, went to sleep. Woke up at four, and I went, you know what? I'm just gonna. I'm just finding a reception. I said, listen, how far is it gonna take me to get into to Manhattan? Forty minutes, bam. L train, bam. Yeah. What? Well, I've got that stuff checked out. I'm not supposed to leave until twelve o'clock, right? I've got to to. I've got to Forty Second Street. I've walked like ten blocks, and I've got to Midtown. It's a studio I've, I've been there before, yeah. and I've gone up the stairs, the and then I see I see uh, Geraldo, the teacher that I've met yeah, yeah. three times, and I just see him, and I just just hug him, and I just bar like a baby man, mm. and I said, my mom's passed, and I just need to practice, and I've gone in that room, and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. Mm. So I've come out of yoga, and I've gone to, I've walked up to Forty Second Street, and I've yeah. gone to a hat shop, Lids. Yeah. And I just look for the biggest guy and I just walk straight past him, walk straight into him. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm. And I've come out and he's gone, yeah, and I've gone, yeah, whatever, man, we're outside then, yeah? Mm. It's one of them, yeah? And I've just w- walled it outside, I've put the bag to the side and this guy's just come at me and he's just starting, he's, 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 like, a, he's like an old Bostonian, he's put, he's, he's put him up. Mm, mm, mm. He's, and he's, he's at, we're at it and he's mm. just, and I've just gone, and I've just, just, we got back on the wall and put my hands, and I just let him wail the yeah, fuck. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm taking some punches, man. Right. Like cabbage ear, Shit. bam. And I can feel the heat on my face. And I wait, and I push him back, and he comes again. And I've gone, come on, he's come again. Push him, he's come again. And he's out of breath now. Mm. He's done. He's got nothing else left. Mm. And he just went, <sighs> and he's walked off, and mm. I'm just battered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. Protected my eyes and my nose, because I know I don't want to get booked out of And I've just done that, and I've ducked another. And I took some good licks, and I felt amazing. Mm, mm, mm. I felt like I needed to do this and I've walked back gone back to the hotel and I'm, I, remember, I remember sitting on the train going to the hotel and my face is like a radiator it's just I can feel the heat yeah, yeah. coming off my face and I just went I felt really good because mm, mm, mm. the yoga was going to do one thing but I needed I needed some I needed, to get, I needed some pain yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I needed yeah. some pain so I've gone to the, to the hotel got my shit and I caught the red eye to LA and I played a four hour set with Armani and just had the best Mm-hmm. Just played my heart out, crying in the set. I'm just there. I'm a bit of a cry anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, I've come back to an old point. And when I've come back, to round off this wonderful story, it's called The Raconteur, is that I've come back. Fritz is at the airport. He says, you're ready. I went, yeah. We've drove to Wolverhampton and I've gone to the Chapel of Rest. And all I'm thinking about is Saturn's Return, the documentary. Mm-hmm. It's very powerful. John Akawari or yeah, yeah. I think John mm-hmm. did this documentary, Blue Ribbon Award, four parts on YouTube. If you want to find it, it's called Saturn's Return. Spiritual people call it Saturn's Return when the planets all line up to the time you were born. So the planets are exactly in the same line mm-hmm. of when you were born. When you look back on your life, I'm, I'm, why, I'm why people, because why, sorry, I'm not being res, res, racist. Go on, go on, the go West on. call it midlife crisis. Mm. The spiritual people call it Saturn's Return. And you question everything. You question why you're here, all this stuff. What have you done? What have you achieved in your life? You know, my mother's not here. The connection, the one thing that I'll say to anyone. When was the last time you felt your belly button? Mm. When was the last time you were connected to the thing that connects you to your mother? Mm. The one thing that connects you to you, that brought you here. Mm. And I walked into the chapel of rest and the guy goes, God, I've been waiting for you. I'm I'm really sorry. Cup of tea. Mm. A loved one. And I've... I've walked in and I remember going around the corner and there's like seven, seven doors and each one of them doors has got someone's family tragedy in it. And I've walked past and he says, it's, it's number five, I think it was. And I've gone and I've opened the doors and there she is, in the coffin, open, and just her and this cross. And I just, it was weird because I, I didn't cry. I just walked up to her and I leaned in and I kissed her on the forehead. And I knew, I knew 
that she was marble. A dead body is like marble. It's nothing else like it. Because when she died on the bed and you kiss her and you say goodbye and she's warm, now she's dead, she's changed. Those 21 grams, as people yeah, put yeah, it, yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Mm. And I kissed her on the phone, it was the weirdest feeling. This might, she looked like this sculpture, this, this, this strange creature that had been carrying my mother. And I sat down and all I could hear in my mind was, go on son, do what I asked. And I put the headphones on and I played mother the whole way down. Mm -mm. And then I cried. Mm -mm. But the feeling of, of what it did to me, it allowed me to let go. I just let go. I just let go right there and then. I just went, it's done. It's done. It's, I can finally, the pain, the release, all that album and all what that piece was about, the tragedy of, 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 of what so many of these kids are going through right now. Hundreds of kids. That, I don't speak to dad, I don't speak to mom. I don't know who they are, I was in a park, but I, you know, it's like there's a, there's a million of me stretching back like a kaleidoscope, you know what I'm saying? So for me, the it allowed me to all of a sudden, this decision of Thailand was imminent, it was done. It was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to Thailand, because I didn't want to go but when mom was sick. Yeah. And things didn't work out for certain reasons, the building permits and shit. Mm -hmm. It was serendipitous, it was yeah. weird. And I went to Thailand with my hand on my heart, and um, carried her with me and, 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 and let go of her. And made Journeyman. Mm -hmm. And Journeyman's probably the happiest album I've ever made. Mm -hmm. I think it's up there with Timeless. In 20 years' time, it will tell. Mm -hmm. Because I hear people saying, yeah, but Timeless. Yeah, I get it, because Timeless is genre-defining. Yeah. And it's very special to people. It's, a, it's our time of adolescence. And it's a coming-of-age album. Did you, did you, therefore, I suppose you organised it in, in this timeline, you must have wrote all things remembered in Thailand. Yeah, because I had to reflect. I had to. I had to kill, killing. Do, after twenty years of living with Timeless and then Saturn's Return, Saturn's Return being the crucifixion of a man, mm. I knew that album would be crucified. Of course, it was going to be because mm. it's a man. Who, come on, man! Who's going to who's going to write a sixty-minute record about his mom and electronic mm. music? Mm -hmm. Moi. Mm. Who else is going to do it? It's a yeah. dirty job to do, but someone's got to do it. Mm -hmm. The idea of a, a, a new set of music which gives ghetto children one, two, three gears, someone had to take it into fourth and fifth and overdrive. Mm. And I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to be the Rick James and this my bitch. I'm going to, I'm going to put it into, I'm going to put it into Funkadelic. I'm going mm -hmm. to the aliens, mate. Mm. Because so much of our black history has been covered up. So much of that stuff that we forget about the Egyptians and, and blackness and science, we're outside of that. Mm -hmm. We narrowed it down in the 80s to hip hop and where it is and we're forgetting that those, those people were sampling folk music. Yeah, yeah. Which is why the second wave of hip hop was so strong because mm -hmm. it was sampling, De La Soul was sampling madness. And we're thinking outside the box. We think New York's just about hip hop. We've got to think about the islands going to New York to build it. It's, what, it's what's happening in London. All the African influx. First we had the police, then we had this, then we got this, then we got all these Ghanaian, you know, all different people, influx of mine. And it's like, we've become this now. And all of a sudden it's on top. And the government underfunding and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We've become that metropolis. All these metropolises simultaneously all doing that. So rewind that and the where we're at. Moving to Thailand at a time when I'd already been through systems. I'd been in New York when I was 17 and a half. Yeah, I, I I'd, seen, I'd seen... I'd seen crack rock. I'd seen man with scales and Uzi 10 and sitting down and walking up at you know, seven steps to get in there with an iron door and go in there and we get some gear and we go and we get high and we look at graffiti and we go out and we go paint some trains mm. and we're high and there's a third round and we're gonna die. It's all of that. Mm. So I'd done that. And I then got to Miami and done booty clubs and like Luke Skywalker and what I call music now, it sounds like club, Strip music from, yeah, the, yeah. from the from the eight from the nineties for me, and did that. So it's another system, but I already had my early system in the UK with funk and Salvations and a rare groove, a wild bunch, a massive attack. You know what I mean? And that, and I come back, mm. and I'm I'm staying in London, and I'm I'm like soul to soul and well and truly blown up. You don't really hear that in in Journeyman. You don't really hear this soul, <laughs> and you don't really hear it like that. It sounds like. <laughs> No, it sounds like Timeless, yeah, mm. sounded, if, if you had to compare Timeless to Jungle, 
yeah? Mm-hmm. Back in those days, yeah? Mm-hmm. Timeless stood out on its own, mm-hmm. yeah? And it was there. Journeyman is 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 that album repeated again, but without the... Um, it's almost like you've just gone on to a different hemisphere with that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it, it's the idea. It's the, I'll tell you why it doesn't sound like all of those things. Because the first album was charged with Maze, Loose Ends, mm. uh, um, uh, Dire Straits, uh, Raji Sakamon. It had a little. It had all of that in there. Yeah. Like that album, when you take it apart, Sea of Tears, the first tune with live drums, because I, I learned it off the Ice Cube thing. Cool. I've got that. So I've got Mel Gainer playing using Simple Minds. Mm. I'm doing that. Sounds like, but it's, 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 it's Sea of Tears, and it's Jamie, his voice in the middle, who's now doing Double Life for mm. Homicide. Yeah, yeah. But it's my son's Good voice. So when I hear that. And I said, what are we doing here? Mm. Washing away the tears. So the almost reverse agony of that album, Coming of Age, mm. it's very serendipitous. Journeyman is cut. I've cut the, 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 the ties mm. between the pain. Mm. I've cut the ties. It's, it's tiny. It's a new environment. It's a new horizon. Mm. Excuse the pun. Do you it's know what? That. This conversation, it kind of like reminds me, it's, it's, it reminds me of me reading those first chapters of uh, All Things Remembered. It's like, it's like we go from there to there, we go to there. And then while I'm reading your book, yeah, and while I'm talking, having this conversation with you, it reminds me, and I say to myself, you know what? How did he bloody write that? A, I'm engrossed because I'm hearing stuff. I've known this brother for 25 years, over 25 years, actually, right? And before even Timeless was conceived, certainly as uh, to public knowledge, oh. yet there's things inside that book, even in the first opening chapters, that I'm like, I never knew that shit. And then he just, <laughs> just jumps from that to that. So I'm like, okay, how did you write it? What well, was it? How did you get to the that The process, well, I'd always, real, I'd always known that writing the first book was kind of like, it was very set up. And I think all of us deep down as artists, especially, well, for me, alchemy has been my biggest treasure. That's the bottom line. Mm. If you want to say if you want to say who I am, I am an alchemist. The problem with alchemy is that you, when you open Pandora's box, when you learn the art of the dark arts, mm. shit comes out, some stuff comes out that's not good too. Mm. The idea of, of harnessing deity I'm gonna say that. Don't take it the wrong way. Harnessing deity in the in the imperfection of me not being able to program, or my choice not to program, was has been set very early. The idea of me being an artist has been embodied in me. So I will put stuff on loop for hours to hear it, just creating deity, to create spirit, to create the sound. The melody's gonna come. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. I know it's there. So the process of the book was: I'd go to, I'd get up in the morning, I go, I go and do Sichi which is Qigong, Chinese meditation. Uh, I'd play backgammon with my daughter's teacher, James, philosopher, ridiculous. He'd kick my ass a lot back <laughs> in my early days. But then we go to, we go, we go, it's called Si Chi. We go into the sea, then we do some Chi, and then we play backgammon. And I got back to the house, take Coco to school, come back. I go downstairs next to the studio and there's a bolt in the hallway. It's a beautiful room. It's just, it's a beautiful room that has Railway sleepers on the floor, because I like the way that railway sleepers feel on my feet. As a kid, I used to run down the railway tracks. Mm. And I know, weird. And um, and I'm always barefoot. And I'd lie on the boat, and I'd set the recorder, and I'd place the recorder, and I've had a lot of therapy over the years. And I thought, all these people trying to get inside my fucking head, they're trying to tell me who I am and what I am and who I am, and I don't even fucking know who I am. So the idea of me going, why don't I, why don't I empower myself? Because the one thing that when I, with the alchemy and all that stuff, it's all like directing people vicariously through their hands of the mouse mm-hmm. to give me exactly what I When I say exactly what I want, this isn't pressure on the fucking couch. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should edit that because it's disrespectful for the artist. This isn't an artist who, yeah, yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. I'll be back in an hour. Yeah, cool. Just make it like that. You know, 120 bars, 16 bars in, take that reverse snare, take it back, make a ghost effect, put an octave down, repeat that. I want the strings to intercede at bar 16. They're going to open up low cellos to mid strings, and I want that to now turn into the high strings. But we're going to use synth patterns to follow those. They're going to break off and go an octave down, and we're going to morph them on a fade. (laughs) Yeah, it's gone. And then the engineer's like, like, can you repeat that for me, please? Well, the difference is that the engineer, (coughs) namely James Davison, gets me because he's been brought he's been brought up on the tenacity of drum and bass music mm. furthermore he's been brought up on the tenacity in the history of metalheads mm. and furthermore the fourth wall was a great album and like whoever did that knows what the fuck he's doing, doing. Yeah. so the idea of shipping james in 
and creating this album, um, the first thing I said is Prism was the first track. We're working with a different time signature and anything I say, you do. You mm. question it, it's, it's over. Mm. And it, it nailed it. And I'm like, this is where Journeyman came. It's the idea. But we're going off track here. Mm. But so the point of the book was if I've been able to manipulate programmers, and I've had some really good ones, Jim Heist, brilliant engineer, yeah. Rob Playford being the one everyone was looking at, you know, mm -hmm. but never made his own music. Yeah. And all these guys were making music, and how can I get my sound to sound like mine and not sound like them yeah. ever? Which mm -hmm. is so and I also think there's another there's another roots for that, which I'm gonna get back to, which is very important, which I've realized yeah. in the last in the year. So the idea of manipulating my own book and all these people wanting to know who I am and me empowering myself as I've done vicariously through these people was to just press play and talk about my childhood with myself and a subject matter. So you literally... So record, today, so it's like... Press play, record... Today it's like, oh, you know what, I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about Jasper the cat. Jasper's a cat that I play with on the weekends, stay at the home, I'd go out, all the kids would go Fun home. chapter, man. So it's a great chapter. It's a great chapter. It's just like, it's just like the detail in it, and I'm like... But what you're hearing is you're hearing my voice, you're not hearing the writer. Like, when I hear my, when I hear any of my music, yeah. I want to hear the soul, I do not want to hear knobs twirling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can get all the demos in the world, but as soon as I hear what program you have, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to sign that music, I want to sign the soul. Mm -hmm. So the idea of the book was to be able to execute that. All the, all the writer does, Ben, who wrote both of John McEnroe's books, and I like the way he wrote John McEnroe's books, because John would sit with him and they'd have arguments and they'd talk stuff, and it's like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of, of, of giving Ben, I says, Ben, I do not want to write it conventionally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record all of these recordings, you're going to transcribe them, and you're going to shuffle the pack of cards in the best arrangement that you think it should be. I'll give you an idea of what this arrangement is going to be in terms of where I think it should go, and then you just tweak it and snap it to I think he, I think he threw them up in the air and picked them up and put them in the book because, because there's no uh, lineage to them. It's mm -hmm. not like... It's well, that's exactly why... Do you know what I mean? The, 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 why it explains in, in the foreword. It explains. It says... Mm -hmm. This book doesn't go left and right. No, it, got, it, it punches yeah, yeah. up and down, and, yeah, you, yeah, and yeah, you are yeah. going to jump from one thing to another. Yeah. Which is why I love Dave Chappelle. Because Dave Chappelle, on, he, on the comeback gig... Dave tells us, he's going to tell us at the beginning, he's going to tell us three jokes on OJ. Right at the end of the, 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 the second Netflix, we've only had two. And he leaves the stage, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, mm. I forgot to say the third OJ. And the idea of laying everything down and giving you these, these chapters and then bringing them back into the idea of backgammon and the idea of what life's about, which you've not got these two yet. Yeah. But it will make sense even more. That what you're saying, it does it goes like that. Yeah. At the end it go you you it, 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 it brings it, just, it back, it brings right. it all yeah, back yeah, to that yeah. situation. Okay. So that's the reason why I did that. And it's a bloody good book. Because it's very, 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 very I mean the the other autobiography was as well, but this is like got a next level of honesty in there and openness. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like, you know, like somebody says, Listen man, I'm gonna tell you my life, but I'm not gonna tell you that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, it, it is ve it's brutally honest. Well, I think that the, well, the one thing about the honesty, especially with the, my growth of, of, of loss and trauma, one of the most important things is the amount of trauma that I, I, I realise on s saying these stories out loud. Jesus Christ, I got a lot of fucking shit as a kid, man. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah a yeah. lot of stuff. I didn't know, man. I got a lot of stuff. So, but what don't kill us makes us stronger. Absolutely. And... Isn't it surely the shape of my music? Because within the tragedy of my music, listen, man, don't listen to Saturn's Return. It's a fucking Debbie Downer album, mm. but it's my Debbie Downer album. It's my, it's my, it's my tragedy. It's still part of your subconscious. And Journeyman. Well, actually, consciousness, not even subconscious. Consciousness. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I yeah. think I think Journeyman in twenty years' time, come at me then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when you because they came at me with timeless, yeah. He never tried. Mm. In his city of life, never made a top 20. Mm. 20 years later, 25 years later, it was like, oh my God, man, that album, this album had changed. It did change music. Mm. Journeyman, it's not job defining, but it's a, it's a really high conscious level of album because it's, it's exploring new environment, new terrain, new jazz method, you know, new ideas of, of reinvention for myself. Yeah, I'll, I'll put that down. I'll listen to that in a year. 
I'll put it down, I'll listen to it in another year, and and um it's all right. and, and it will reveal itself. It will reveal itself. Reveal itself, itself. itself. You know I mean? Um but the power of the book in terms of the honesty reflection the yoga. Which I wanna to get to next actually. Mm. I mean, yo gangster, yo gangster, <laughs> right? Um, you know, like for those who don't know, right? I mean I don't know you missed it, but my Instagram is filled with over the last four months of me um, being introduced it's, it's to God. really sticking with this kid, by the way. You know, really yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then we talk about serendipity. We start talking about serendipity. So to give you a bit of background, for those of you um, who don't know, focus. Huh? Oh, sorry, All right? Man. Don't sorry. listen to him. Listen to me. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Right. Let's, let's keep that going. Right. Okay. <laughs> right, as I was saying, um, we're talking about serendipity. Um, you, you know, like I bought some art from this kid years and years and years ago and times change and things pass on and yada 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 and all the rest of it yeah and then what happens is that um is that i bump into him at target's book launch which is target's book launch. yeah which incidentally is doing really well right mm -hmm. now i see a picture of him maybe i can't remember how long ago but i see a picture of him weeks <coughs> weeks uh, before of him doing a uh, head to toe stand head to knee, head to knee yeah mm -hmm. and i'm like okay beautiful picture by the way and i'm like oh right he's serious then you right mm -hmm. so that's that um there's no other reason i can't think of any other reason why i thought to myself i might want to do yoga right but I do know that I don't want to go, but I would never have gone by myself. But I did go when we had the office over by Brick Lane. I went into a hot yoga once. This was like over six years ago. Walked in and within 20 minutes was like, what the hell am I doing in here? This is ridiculous. Yeah, rubbish. Yeah. And I came out, yeah? Of course. So here we are, fast forward six, seven years down the line, and then I'm in Fierce Grace. You take me over there and, and I nearly pass out, but I don't leave the room. Which was uh, go give you a try right. five and not leaving the room. Right, I didn't leave the room. Never leave the room. And um, and here I am four here months later and I'm hooked. How did you get into yoga? Where well, did it start for you? And um, I mean, it gets it gives me the feeling like you went to Thailand and found yourself, and then you got into yoga that way. No, but I don't think that's the story. Not My a instinct story. tells me that's it's not, not the story. story at all. The the idea of the yoga, um, I'd. When I broke my leg, I, I'd done one reality show too many, paying for a divorce, and my leg was finished. I My life was done. I'd, I'd, I'd done this divorce, I'm, I've got one reality show too many, and I decide that Michael Copperman, every time I saw Michael, I'd bump into Michael, and I was still using a lot, and I said to Michael, um, why is he always so fucking zen? I want to, I want to punch him in the face because mm. he's so, he's so cool. Mm. He's so like, yeah, I'm cool, man. Yeah, I'm Bikram baby. I'm like, oh, what were you saying, Bikram baby? Mm. He was, yeah, yeah, yoga, man. I'm down at, uh, I'll go down and do yoga at, uh, <coughs> uh, next to Radio One actually, where you guys might be going. I'm like, okay, and it's right there on Bolsover and Clipstone Street. Mm. So I go down there, and I walk in the room. I get changed. I go in there. I go in there and I'm like, what the fuck is this bollocks? Why are these people wearing these shorts, you knobheads? Mm. And I'm like, 20 minutes, so I just get up and I go, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm trying to keep, nah, man, I'm done. I'm come out of there. And I go home and I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I'm very upset. And um, I then, um, I then go, something is said to me, just, just Michael, Michael Farm is, how'd you get on? I'm like, I didn't, man. I failed, man. He goes, just, just go back, man. Yeah, yeah, cool. And I went back a week later. And I did it again. I think it lasted 30 minutes and I'm mm -hmm. done. And then, uh, and then something about this horrible, sickly feeling made me feel like how I feel when I've just come down on gear and I can't find any more. Mm, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm like... There's quite something quite sadistic about that. Mm. And then I thought, let me, try, like, let me try one more time. <laughs> yeah. But the idea of me DJing at hot clubs was like, just think it's like the Blue Knot. I just think it's like you got in the Blue Knot. Yeah, yeah. like, so I've gone down there. Now, I'd had the accidents. I've never done anything about it. When I had my accidents, paying for the divorce, um, I, at the time, um, I just made an excuse to, to, to do more drugs. Because obviously they're, they're giving me like heroin. 
because he's kind of like to get the pain away and I don't like heroin I love coke and I'm just getting lots of fucking coke and I'm getting completely shit faced and I have my bed downstairs and I think Liz at the time was looking after me and my PA getting stuff sorted for me and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I was I was fucked and I did no I did no rehab on the leg I did nothing and I just sat there and I just dragged myself to death mm. and then it was like I'm going to crash my fucking Ferrari I'm going to die here and then I got I got divorced I, got, I, got, I went to, to court on crutches getting a divorce you know and it was it was ruthless man it was some ruthless shit Mm. I lost, you know, nearly a mil mm, mm. of cash. Like, gone. That's it, gone. I had to sell my cars, my Ferrari, everything. I lost everything. And uh, I said to Michael, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stick this out. Mm. Um, that's my leg. Let me see that. That was my leg. Show me one. Um, this looks like some CGI it, it shit. It looks right? like some CGI shit, right? So, you can but that's see in that. the hospital, right? This is when they cut it. This is when they had to open it up. And it was, you see that? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was like a kebab, basically, that was. And, um, and so they're that, saying that. So, it's, it was... so, so what they had to do was the leg was so severe. It was, just, it was the weirdest thing because what had happened was that there was one reality show too many. How serendipitous is this? Mm -hmm. It was very serendipitous because I was paying for the divorce and Trenton was kind of, he'd come up to visit me. And... We've been training for eight weeks, and I'm killing it. Skating, murdering it, you know what I mean? Running, murdering, cycling, killing it. And it was only me and Jade, who's Emma Button's husband, Jade, mm -hmm. um, who was anywhere near. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, I'm like, dashing this way, and I'm going to get quick, get this money and get a bonus, you know what I mean? I'm going to get bonus <laughs> pay here. I'm going to get this paid money, get it paid for the divorce, and I'm going to rub some money in the face. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to, that's it. And um, I had, a, at that point, I've been paying for shit and parody and I've become a parody. I'm doing Big Brother. I'm doing, I'm doing Strictly. I'm doing all this. I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah, monkey on the barrel. Mm, 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 mm. The monkey can dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was also the fact of, you know, my, trying to protect my music. I, can't, I, I could have sold the label and I, and I didn't want to sell it. And I think and what, what was going on at the time. So... It's eight weeks and I'm killing everything. I'm killing the chart, killing it all, killing it all, killing it all, killing it all. And it's the last training session before the programming a week, the last training session, the last event of the day on the last turn of the day. And I've already done my three jumps. Mm -hmm. But on my third jump, I fell and I decided one more time. You're joking. And it was the second, so the second jump, and it's the one, and I've got one jump to go when Trenton gets in the boat and my ego's on fire. And I'm like, I'm gonna show him how good I am. And I've come Shit. around, the boat's come around, I've grabbed the ski, I'm up on the water, I've come around, I've gone right out, because you were to, to get gravitas, to get kind of gravity, you pull out, and I'm, I'm leaning into this water, man, right? And my heels are digging, and then you bring it back around, and you make you run up to the ramp, right? So I come around. I'm thinking, I'm gonna hit the. Are you gonna hit the? You hit the left corner, so the thing can go really tense. Pull it down to your waist and launch off. The, uh, you hit the right corner and launch off the as far go as far left as you can. As I've launched, like I've gone down. I've gone. Yeah, Eddie the Eagle. <laughs> Eddie the Eagle. I've, la I've launched it. I've launched it. And I, I come down, and my legs, and I put my, and I hit the water, but the wake of the wave uh. has gone, mm. and then the wakes come back, and I forgot about the wake coming back, and I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like I'm the ego ski, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm, I've tipped my ski to the left, and the wakes caught, it and it's just pulled my leg under the water, and it's gone. I just heard this noise, man. What the hell? So, so it's, it's called a spiral fracture of the left femur. It's the boots with they give me the wrong boots. So they're laced up yeah. and they're too tight and they haven't released. So the skis turned my leg. Ooh. It hasn't popped the ankle mm. and it hasn't popped my hip out of the joint. Mm. It's just snapped my femur mm -mm. like a piece of rock. So the spiral started to in an inch and a half at the just below the ball joint is where the, 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 the break started. And it went all the way down. Oh my goodness. And it's a spiral fracture, the worst you can get. So they've had to they've had to cut to the second part of the, the bone sticking out here, and they've had to cut the whole thing to open it up, and they had to leave it open for eight days, or they're going to have to remove the leg. Mm -mm. And I'm in hospital, 
and I'm just getting loads of gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting really high. <laughs> and my leg, that photo, I said to the surgeon, man, this is never going to be right. He was like, I said, will you take these pictures for me? It's the picture mm -hmm. I'm showing you. I didn't get the pictures until Moose sent them to me, like, last week. You're joking. I hadn't seen them for years. Mm -mm. And Moose, so I still got them pictures, you know? And I see it, and I'm thinking, <laughs> right, well, the kebab, he went, yeah, yeah, I still got the kebab pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A little bit of lettuce thing. So I've 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 done, I've, done, I've I've kept it to look at. It's morbid. I won't post it on Instagram because no, yeah, yeah, I hear it's you, like I hear it's you. not right. It's it not don't right. look real. It don't look real. It looks like some some I've seen that in, in a horror makeup film. in a yeah, horror, in horror film. film. So what happened was <clears throat> they've they the legs twice as big because it's because it's the, the veins and the arteries are saying don't put blood there. Mm. The body has a natural way of healing itself, mm. which is why people get gangrene. The blood just goes somewhere else. After the bleeding stops, you just go somewhere else and the blood, the leg dies. That's why it gets mm -hmm. green. That's why you have amputate, amputate, amputate the leg. So because that's to keep it open, had a, a machine sucking all the shit off it mm -hmm. to keep it alive. And then they operate, you know, after that operation, and then we, they, 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 we, they put it back together. Unbelievable. And they put it back together. And then I was getting divorced. Unbelievable. I lost all my money. I sold my two Ferraris. The Bentley. No I, wonder he didn't want to stay yeah, high. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, it was it was a big meltdown for me, and then it was kind of like it was over. My career, I'm done. That's it. You know, like it's that great story. Orphan boy fights all his life, gets in there, gets taken into care, does it, survives, da da da, breaks out, becomes a global superstar, da da da, loses, marries a stripper, loses everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, comes yeah, back, yeah. da da da, comes back, then comes back from the dead. And then 20 years, it makes another album. And yeah, that's yeah. Journeyman. So that's at the end of a very big mm. situation. So, the point of this. Yoga. Yoga. Because they said I'd never walk again. I'd never done any work on it. I'd never worked on myself internally <coughs> properly. I'd done the Hoffman, which enabled me to get divorced from the person who basically married my mother. Someone who was never going to love me and someone who was ultimately going to abandon, it was going to be abandonment issues, which I've always had to live with. We attract, we marry our mothers and fathers. We, we end up doing this shit. So breaking that cycle, that cord, and mentally breaking that cord, <coughs> was that the yoga became a thing where I'd go there and there's a guy called Paul Dobson, who was a black Jamaican heritage teacher from Leicester. And I just hit it off with him. And he, he pulled me out and he went, he went to me. I said, you know, obviously, certain things and what he goes you know what I said how, how do you get into this yoga thing I said, no I'm going every week he's like gee put that thing there cool and I'm always trying to do these moves I'm trying to do these moves and and in, in my defense you know standing here today was the first thing I got the most difficult posture first which is kind of what I'm like in my own life I can't I can't I, got, I don't actually change a fucking plug, mm -hmm. but I can make a complicated piece of music mm -hmm. vicariously through someone else so I've gone to the complex part first and he was like, you're doing really, really well. And then he's gone, it's not about that one posture. Yeah. Do me a favor. When you come here next week, just leave your ego at the door. Mm. And I was kind of offended. But he was fucking right. Mm. Because I'd had, to, I'd, I'd, I'd had the money and the fame and all that. It made me ignorant. It made me a complete, I'm a complete cunt. Well, mm. I'm a good cunt today, mm. but I was a complete cunt. The idea of my ego walking around before I did. Here I am. Look what I can do. Mm. Look what I've got. So, when I started leaving the ego at the door and, pra and really getting into the practice, I quickly realised that it's a 90-minute class. The sadistic attraction of heat and looking in the mirror and facing your real self in a world of selfie. Yeah. Ugh. Look at me. To, I can I can see this struggling adult. Oh no! Oh, hang on a minute. I've got my, oh my god! I can see the boy. Mm. I can, I can, or the girl. I can see the boy. I can see him. I haven't seen him for years. I started seeing right, the minute. boy strip back, and I said, ninety minutes, forty-four minutes into it, reload, forty-four minutes at the end. That one minute in the middle, at the heat, at the height of the standing series, how much would I pay for that gear? Because mm -hmm. that feeling I've got at that point, it's no different than my illusion of coke when I first threw coke. Been a cocaine addict for thirty-five years. 
when when I first did coke, what's it, what does he do? Well, makes you talk like a super lawyer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Is that it? Because I was expecting some illusions. I was expecting I was expecting to trip out my box. I was mm. expecting, and it wasn't. It had no effect on me. Just talking a lot. Yeah. And then, thirty years into it, it's like one lie will send me over the fucking edge. Yeah. What is that? That's psychosis. So the idea of the idea of how high it would make me, well, if I can put that together, I'm not going to get high on yoga in a month or yeah. a year. I'm going to get high on yoga over 10 years. So I'm 10 years in, and I can't explain where it's gone, but I get really high in yoga. Yeah. Like, it's such a natural high. It's the kind of the antichrist of what coke does. It's a natural drug. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 um, a couple of things. First, I remember that, like, it was yesterday that as we, you know, yeah, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, we're going to go here. Okay, you wear these shorts and you're going here and you're going to go here. And we were literally just about to push the door. <laughs> and right? I said the same thing. And, and you said to me, just stop one second. He said, when you're going there, what you said, tell me two things. He said to me, Ron, breathe through your nose, don't breathe through your mouth. And you've done a short explanation about how. How radiator, pushing exactly, holes in yeah, the radiator. Exactly. You can't get it overheat really yeah. quickly, man. So there was that. You can't and then you it. said to me, then you said to me, leave, which was very poignant, which was leave your ego outside here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't just the words, it was the way you said it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It was there was a sincerity about it. And and funny enough, I mean, obviously you know, you know what I mean? Um I had a conversation with Rodney P. You know Rodney as 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 uh, he has gone to his first session recently. And he came out of that glowing, glowing, glowing. And the one thing he said to me was, Ron, I saw in your post you said about leaving the ego outside. And it's so true. Uh, I mean, so that guy who told you that 10 years ago, imagine that, that that is... The power of it is... Well, I think it's, I also think it's also the misconception of yoga. Well, this is another this, thing. This is the thing that I think needs to be touched on because I think it's a very elitist thing. I think a lot of people have done really well from yoga studios. And my friends that are beautiful, Michelle Peralta, yeah. uh, George. Yeah, Georgie. lovely people, yeah, yeah. You know, when I call it on mm. for the right reason, yeah. Um, I think a lot of studios in like different types of yoga yeah. in their summertime should be giving up this space for these young kids. I call it the seeds program. It's like you can't, you can't plant seeds on a candy road. You've got to plant seeds in a good field with good soil. I count my people around me as good soil people. Mm -hmm. You know, like Paul's a great teacher. Michael Ely, man, is a don, mm -hmm. been a yoga champion twice. He's, I mean, his wife, Cindy Haig. Cindy's been my yogi. You know, I've got like th three really strong yogis in my mm -hmm. life. You know, Stuart Gilchrist is a yogi, which is another, it's a whole other planet of yogi. Mm -hmm. He's like a yogi. <laughs> he's, on a, he's on some yogi shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Michael's his Luke Skywalker. Hey, oh really? Oh god, yeah. Really? Michael's, right. Michael's, okay. Michael's the Jedi man that from from his hand. Right. Okay. But Cindy Haig was my early teacher at Soul Hot Yoga, and Paul was the one that I wanted to avoid. I'd have a few with Paul, and yeah. I'm like, "When's Paul doing it? Shit, I've got to avoid Paul." He's like, ah, you didn't think I was doing today, did you? <laughs> because because he's hardcore. Do you know what I mean like it, it? It called me out. Yeah. And I try and get away with shit, mm -hmm. and he's having none of it. Mm. And you know, and he's like, together, Goldie, mm. not you know, mm. it's not just you one in the room, it's together. Mm -hmm. Can we move this together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Cindy is a yogi, and my inspiration has been a big inspiration. Paul is most definitely my oldest men the mentor that really meant a lot. And I have a practice with him. The last time I practiced with Paul was in Thailand last year because he's family now, he comes oh, out. Yeah. Um, and he comes out with his with his with his with his partner, and we practice. And practicing next to him, obviously this guy is my mentor. Mm -hmm. is one of the greatest achievements for me. Like I'm with this guy, and I'm practicing the same Amazing. practice, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're going for it. And it's and it's like and it's not about the ego. It's like I'll sit down because I'm a little bit tired, mm -hmm. I'm heavy, and he'll have a rest, and and it's and it becomes something else. Yeah. And the idea of the power of yoga. And there's a great book which I've given to Ron called How Yoga Works. Mm -hmm. And this is a really big choice. This is a choice for me. In the same way that I made a choice not to be an engineer, mm -hmm. I made a choice not to be an engineer, right? I'm an artist. I made a choice to, to paint canvas. I made a choice to make a fake guitar as a kid instead of buying one, make the shape of it, make it look like a real one. Mm. 
I made a choice. Bikram Chowdhury, I've known Bikram for a long, long time. Mm. I met Bikram really early on. And when I met him in London, when I had a meeting with him, it was like, I mean, talk about the ego. I mean, Bikram is, is wow. He's just another planet. Mm. You know, he's come from India. He's made billions and billions. This is a guy who taught Brick Shields, Aldo Jabbar, Quincy Jones, all went to his studios mm. in the peak of the 80s. They're all at his studios. He's a billionaire. Collects Rolls Royces, as you do. <laughs> and had mad court cases against him, mad shit, you know, women throwing themselves at him and making court case, touchy feely, whatever you want to call it. He was in Thailand, he was there, and he's like, God, I want you to do this and make this thing we're going to do, and I want you to, to think my son like to be DJ and want to do this and want to make, I got good big crab impersonation, you know, I like, lobster, loves his lobster. <laughs> God, these devils, people like serpent coming at me, trying to fight me and trying to do this, and God, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> this watch going $250,000, this son, I'm like, talk about, <laughs> fuck. Are we saying it's not about the ego? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the series, the practice, is the twenty six, yeah, yeah, twice, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, it was basically the idea of becoming yoga was used as you go to the doctor in India, everyone's poor. Do this posture twenty times a day for two weeks. Mm. Do this posture for twenty times a day for three weeks. Really, right? Okay. So each posture was associated with an ailment, right? Okay. Which is kind of what yoga is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And of course, it's all based on half that. Bikram's not the inventor of it. It's like we've got bottled water. Mm. We have bottled water. You can get it in a mountain. Yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. to find it. Yeah, yeah. And yoga's 5,000, 6,000 years old, right? The idea of him bottling it and selling it to America is no different than people selling us EDM. He yeah. really sold it. They sold it back to us. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the thing which I think was a stopping point for that, for me, in all the gurus I've met, which I'll come back to Stuart, is that, You've got to expand the practice to suit society in its own way. Stuart has his own system. Michelle Peralta has fierce grace. Everyone adapts to the environment. We, we, yoga's, that's, when it grows, it has to adapt. Culture, music adapts, which is why I don't really care about what I say about it because I've not come from the world of it. I just love it. Mm. So the idea of me not being a teacher He's asked me three times. I could have, and I was in time and building a house, and I was like, "Teacher training is down the road." I'm like, "Yeah, no, hmm. no, no, no. Why no?" Same question with Saturn's return. I was making mother, and Madonna calls me and says, "Fly to LA next week, do my album." I fell out with I fell out with Nelly, and I, I love Timeless Man. Really, I don't think you even listen to it properly. Mm. And she wanted me to go to LA. And I was halfway through Mother. What guy in his right fucking mind would turn down Madonna's album? Mm, mm, mm. It would have made me for life, right? Mm. Of course it would. Of course it would. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. I'd have been shooting up quicker than Phil Spector's fucking putting holes in people. Yeah. I would have been found dead in a room with hookers, mate. That's me done. Because I was, I was a serious addict then. Mm. And I could not control my insatiable desire. Not at all. Mm -hmm. So the idea of me getting on a podium empowering myself with something that I'm going to become complacent, mate. Was that a little conscious decision, though? It's a conscious time, decision, Or is it just a memory it's now you're saying to yourself, you know something, if I had gone, that would have happened. Do you know what I mean? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's Mother Nature's way of taking me saving out of game, you. saving me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's Mother Nature's way. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I, I believe your life works backwards, and I'm a big believer in, in reincarnation, big believer in I've been here so many times, but this is the one that counts. Mm. This is the one that I remember, mm. so I'm going to make the most of this one. Because yeah. whatever that is, I ain't, I ain't an atheist, but mm. you can't comprehend that outside of this timeline. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. inconceivable mm -hmm, to be able mm -hmm. to think you can, mm. which is, again, the ego. Yeah, yeah. Man, man's ego. Mm. But the idea of, of me teaching yoga would have been... You know, I would love to, the one thing I think I'd love to do is I still think Fierce Grace is amazing. I think the system's amazing. I can't say never, but I think I've, I, I didn't make a record till I was 27, mm -hmm. 26 and a half, 27. I didn't start Big Cram till I was 44. Mm -hmm. I never got late till I was 18. I'm a late starter. Mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, so you're never saying never. Yeah, it's just the, yeah, the yeah. idea of me going all the way around the houses has always been a story mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah, yeah. I went from Birmingham to New York to Miami to London back. You know what I mean? I think yeah. It's like I've always got a roundabout way of doing stuff because my journey, man, It's a, my learning is about my journey. Yeah. It's not about my arrival. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we, you touched on the point about the yoga and, the, and the, almost the elitism of it, yeah? Um, but even before you get to the elitism, you know, like, it's set and it's... Um, I don't know, it's, it's positioning has been based on its environment, yeah? Mm. You know, like somebody from whoever, whoever it was who went to India and said, you know what, I really enjoyed yoga. They, that, that person might not be someone who's from the hood of Birmingham, Bristol, yeah. London, whatever, you, yeah? It might have been someone from, like, a more affluent part of town. They then come back and they say, you know what, this thing is really, really good. They don't then go and say, well, okay, I'll go and set it up in the hood. They go and set it up in their <laughs> affluent yeah. part of town, yeah? <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, but what's happened, you know what I mean? Certainly the revelation that's come from me is that yo guys listen I'm from the hood but I found this thing man do you know what I mean and then when I look and I look and I go boy you know something there ain't you ain't gonna be able to roll this one no 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 let me take that back you might not be able to roll this out because this is not it you think it's tree hugging and you, you think it's 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 like you think that yoga is. I mean, I ain't do that rubbish, rubbish. You know? I, but I don't want to be arrogant by saying to people, you know what? Come let me see. Let me see. Let me see the first half. Let me see you do it in this half. Mm. now. because I'd be ignorant. But the idea of saying this is an inversion mm. of the ego, and yes, by default, I can go to the gym like I used to go with Moose until I'm doing legs and I'm sick, mm. and I can go there and I can I can, I can start looking. Me and Rhino used to go all the time. Me Rhino, Moose, Rhino. And, I, and I start pumping up, looking really good. I'm mm. 53, so I'm I'm not. Mm. Do you know what I mean I'm not pumping like that? I used to pump like that. Look, I used to look at people. Rah! I'm kind of pumped up. Yeah, yeah. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Let me see if he's gonna see me doing this right about. Yeah, now he's gonna see me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now one second, that guy's gonna see me doing this. Let me just have a little walk around here. Yeah. I can look really strong here. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know I mean because that man's in there, and I'm gonna yeah, and I'm gonna. Show the power, yeah, cool, yeah, that's just ego, man. Mm. But if you go into a yoga room, and by default, if I do those weights every day for three years, mm. I'm pretty much gonna look good. You know, I'm, go I'm gonna look really good, right? Yeah. You go to a yoga room, and there's a fat woman with a black guy, with a tall, skinny white guy, and as you know, you think, yeah, right, whatever, yeah, cool. And all of a sudden, this black woman's doing something that like you're thinking, how the fuck did yeah, she yeah, do yeah, that? That's right. Because how the hell did she just let her leg go? And her leg is like a, a 45 degree angle in the air. How can she do that? Yeah, so yeah. The, but the difference is, is that you start to realize it's actually not about the moves. Mm. It's how that's to preoccupy the body. Mm. It's try it's all about breathing. Mm. It's I'm gonna make my body breathe, my lungs respond to the actions of my body in such a way. So I'm sick, I've been sick all week. My premise was I played out Dover Street last night. Dover Arts Club. Mm. I have three hot toddies and I'm, I haven't drank for a month and I'm hammered. Tell me about that. Listen, I've never heard of that, man. I'm hot toddies. Can you believe he has never heard about I've hot toddies? never heard of a hot toddy. Can somebody before? write to Rince, please, and give him a recipe right? for what a hot toddy well, is? Because he's, he's clueless. You know what? And for those of you who are in the it's same the camp as me, no, for those of you in the same camp as me, will you just exp- I don't want to dig- digress, but just please. Give us the recipe of what a hot toddy is, because I never heard of that shit before. Maybe it's the Scottish in me. I don't right? Know. Okay. Go but the it. idea was that I was hammered, but I remember I did a photo shoot with a guy called Lawrence Watson, really famous photographer. Taught with Randy MC early when they first started, when there were no one. And anyway, the great thing about that was that Lawrence, um, things happened in his family, and his son. Miles, I look at this bro, I'm like, right, mum look like a strat, it's a strat 70s. Mm. Look like some shaft business, you mm, know what I mean? Mm, like picky mm. head ting, mm. you know, kind of bit of a fro, mm. yellow skin, light skin. Mm. Like my man's like, why, my man's got some like, you know, like big, like he's like, you know, pusher man. Mm. I'm like, rah, but he looks tongue. Yeah, yeah. And he starts asking me about the yogi, so I say this thing with the yoga, oh, yo, yogi, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you want to go? Because oh, I, I, I don't know, uh, there's a place around the corner for me in Queens Park, and you know I'm not sure and it's expensive. You know? And I said, look, I'll tell you what, Thursday, nine o'clock, you around? He went, yeah. So I've done this thing, and before I went to do this gig, I've, I've, I've said to him, listen, man, I feel really, really shit, but I'm gonna call you at the death. Mm-hmm. And I woke up, and I thought I was gonna wake up, mm-hmm. and it was seven o'clock, and I, fu- I texted him, I said, you up? Question mark. He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, nine o'clock, studio, really? bam. And yeah, I've, yeah. Got, I've got, I've got a, a dutifulness to mentor this kid and not flop on him. Mm. And I think, lead by example. So I've gone there and I've talked, him and his dad. <coughs> and we've got in the studio and he's, he's texting me today and he's like, 
it's the best thing I've ever done and I'm really humble and I'm happy and ting and uh, so 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 my point about this is that the misinformation and people that have studios, please give up space because it doesn't cost you anything. When you've got your curriculum of your stats and you look at your stats and you look where it's going, you might have a back room. You might want to do like, we're like off-peak, off-peak used to be, right? Yeah, something, yeah, yeah. So yeah, in yeah, off-peak, something. when you know people are at work and you can do, you know, you can do maybe the one o'clock to the, to the three o'clock, mm. give it up for the community people mm. that haven't got the money to do that. Because the idea of it being so expensive, I get it, it's because it's like... These teachers are moving around and not making enough money and it's that and the studios want to make money and we've got to create a seeds program where these people that you might be able to log on have a device which goes from different studios, a database, which goes, oh my God, there's three spaces left at first grade. If we pitch for it, we can get it. Yeah. And you can go there with your friends. And I think... I think that would be the really, idea of really Gil, amazing. The idea yeah. of Gil Scott Heron, Sonny Rollins, Quincy Jones, Aldum Jabbar, Spike Lee, all these people doing Bikram yoga. Yeah, yeah. Hot yoga yeah. and doing yoga in general, man. Yeah, yeah. In mm. general, mm. Naomi Harris, nay, nay, she's doing yoga. People do yoga. And it's like, if we could harness that power, you know, my son phoned me, man, one of the most beautiful things. He says, Dad, man, will you come and do a talk to the, to the inmates and maybe mm. about yoga too? Because I think I like to try it, you know, Dad. And I went to the prison in Brixton. Yeah. Me and Kelly, we go down there, and I've got these inmates that are coming brilliant. out soon. That's brilliant. And, we, and 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 how stiff they were. Yeah. How when I was when I was adjusting them, Kelly's teaching the class, and I'm adjusting them wow. to get them. In. And they were so stiff because, like, I'm in prison. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, just mm. everything is like this. You know? And they were really. And some of the guys wrote some letters and said, "I want to try this when I'm out. I want to mm. try. You know, and and it's in the prison system in Australia. It's in the school system in Australia." Mm. And we've sold our kids enough drugs. With America's proof of that, we've yeah. manif they've manifested Trump. The, the 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 way that we treat addiction and the way that we treat trauma has got to change, man. This ain't about going. I went to Antigua to Eric Clapton's gaff, and I'm going there, and I'm going there with people who have been there. Through, how long? Is your first time here? Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, it's my third time. Wow, something's obviously wrong then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because daddy spent your money to bring you here and he's rich. And it's just like a bunch of rich kids sprinkling shit on their cornflakes, man. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm done with this shit. And I'm like, something ain't right here. So the Hoffman Institute, I think, I've got in my house probably edging towards 80 letters from people that have gone through the Hoffman and said, I would never have done this mm -hmm. until you've done it. You showed me that I could do it because I'm a street kid and I never thought I could do this. Yeah. And they're beautiful letters because in the Hoffman, part of the process is that you write a letter to one person when you're done. Yeah. It's like a bit of a part Just explain a bit for the audience what the Hoffman Well, for the audience, we're trying to keep it short. We're probably yeah, going to do this, this interview in like maybe four parts, maybe. Yeah, the yeah, the yeah. idea of it is that it's a quadrant. It deals with spiritualism, the self, now, present, uh, your past. Uh, and, and, and the mechanics of you. So it's like a quantum. And it's a guy called Bob Hoffman who went to Asia and looked at acupuncture, looked at uh, shamanic healing, looked at Reiki, and he went to Colombia, went to all these sort of South American stuff and looked at the, the Western world and medication and how we treat stuff and how we deal with trauma. And you go there, you're not allowed to talk about what you do there. It's very, very kind of quiet, mm. hush hush. Um, but if I see someone that's done Hoffman, you're getting hugged out. Like, yeah, you're getting yeah. hugged. This ain't the cult, though. Yeah, People yeah, think yeah. it's a cult. It's not. Highest divorce, divorce rate in the world. Yeah, because you're marrying your mum, you idiot. Or yeah, you're marrying yeah. your dad. Mm -hmm. Of course. It, and you're going to be unhappy for many years just for the kids. Mm -hmm. I want a happy family. So the Hoffman teaches me about looking at my parents and remembering that they were children mm -hmm. and having empathy for my mother. Mm -hmm. It's a very powerful, powerful, powerful tool. Because you, you know it's dealt with. I mean, I, you know, this is a guy that's been abused by by males. That I, 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 I just, I'm in a room with a gay guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And I've got to deal with this guy. And I'm, it's an obstacle immediately. Yeah, yeah. And in, at the end of the course, I'm rolling around on the floor with his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like laughing and controllably. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And still friends. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like so. So you've got to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I've had to work on a lot of mental issues, and my issues are trauma. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realise until the last couple of years how much fuck I'm gonna love it. Yeah. And Thailand is a fresh breath. I'm no one there. I'm just Fantong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Gold. Yeah. 
they don't know me from this. And they, they don't know what I've done. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I became normal. That's nice. If you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I can go fishing, I can go and mm. walk on the beach. And you get the odd kind of like, oh my God, look, brother's like, yeah, man, I'm from, like, I'm from, I'm from Coventry, man, with me missus. I'm on a leave. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I'm from Ilford, mate. Yeah, man, what? Andy C. Yeah, man, wicked, mate. Yeah, wicked. <laughs> what are you playing out? What are you doing? You live here, what? <laughs> so you get all that shit. Um, but, you know, I distanced myself in that in that, in that situation to, to, to be Clifford. Yeah. Because Goldie was created and you could just see Clifford just behind him, maybe mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm, look carefully mm -hmm. enough. And some days you're not going to see Clifford at all. Mm -hmm. But you might see him a little bit. And he became his persona, the parody, and his, the shield. And But what, the, what he did, what Clifford did was, what, what Goldie did was just crushed Clifford. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he, I, I want to speak. I, like Clifford never had a voice anymore, so yeah. I killed my boy. Mm, mm, mm. It's like, look at that, look at that beautiful butterfly, look at that beautiful bird. You, look at, I've got it, 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 man, I've got it. Oh my God, he's dead. What do you mm, expect? Mm, 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 mm. Now, the Buddha and the Buddhist, which is probably the closest thing we are to, just sitting there, and then the bird just goes, look at that bird, a beautiful bird. And he just goes again. Mm. But it comes back. Because it lands on my side. It lands on the side of the railings and I'm looking at it. And it comes back and the butterfly comes into the house and it comes out. And they're big ones. Massive, the big as your hand. Mm. And it just goes, whoop, 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 and it just goes out of the house. Mm. It comes in and it comes out. And it's just the idea where I'm at in my life now is making me be the right today. I'm today I'm the best version of myself I can be today.